Welcome to part five of the Excel VBA Real Example Series. Let's get straight into the file this time. You'll recall from last time, we put this conditional statement in to allow us to understand if a value appears in this list or doesn't appear in this list. I'm just gonna put some indentation here um, to allow us to understand the shape of things and to identify this conditional statement clearly. So yeah. We've got a message box popping up at the moment saying this value is in the list. So that in itself is not particularly useful for us. What do we actually want to happen? Well, actually, uh, if the value is in the list, then we don't need anything to happen because the value is already in the list. If the name is not in the list, however, I'm just going to amend the code there. If the name is not in the list down here, then we want to add the name to the list. And let's just put some code in there to kind of get us started with that. I'm going to clear out the existing names here. So we'd like the first name to appear. Uh, what cell is it? The first name to appear in cell C7. So let's just say uh, sheets analysis, which is the name of the sheet, dot range C7 equals, and then what do we want it to equal here? Well, we want it to equal the name cell and we have a loop that's going through those cells and the variable that works with that loop is Chris cell, of course. The Chris cell range variable and we can say dot value for completeness, although that's not absolutely necessary. So what are we expecting to happen now? Uh, well, let's just play the code. So control S, save the file. I'm going to hit the F5 key, play in the code. We can see all of the names we're dropping in there and Stephanie Hall is our last name. You might remember from the last video the significance of this particular name, Stephanie Hall. Going to the file sheet in the file MO customers, we can see if I just go across the other side of the screen, we can see that Stephanie is the last customer on our in our Excel file there. So that seems to be working. But again, that in itself is not particularly helpful because we don't want the names just overwriting previous names like that. We want a nice list of names. So how might we do that? And I'll give you a clue. We're only going to use tools we've used elsewhere on the channel. So you might want to stop the video and think about it yourself. Well, we're going to use an Excel technique that allows us to control position. Now position, there's always more than one way to do it. I recommend you use offset, offset to help you control position. What we want to say to Excel is start in this cell here, or maybe start in this cell, call this an anchor cell, and then move down to the end of the list. And we're going to tell Excel how long the list is using a formula, using a formula. Again, formulae and VBA combined together. This particular way might not be the most efficient, but it is pretty efficient and it's the easiest for us to understand. So we're going to introduce another formula here and let's say names in list and then here a simple count a formula will do the job. And then I'm just going to quickly reference, use the same range reference we used before. In fact, I'm just going to take this formula, copy it down, control C, F2 key, put me in formula editing mode and control V. And I'm just going to, because I'm so lazy, such a lazy programmer, I'm going to edit an existing formula. And there we go. Got a count a formula there. That's an interesting point. Is that being lazy? Well, yeah, we did minimize our work, but we also used something pre-existing that we know is working okay and then kind of amended it, tweaked it to get it working for us. So sometimes laziness can be a virtue in computer programming. That's a quote from uh, Andrew Martin, who's one of my first programming lecturers. So we've got one name in the list. That seems to make sense. Let's check the range here. What are we going to do? We've got a new mechanism in the file. What are we going to do? We're going to test it. Let's just put another name in here. Okay, seems to be working. Another name in here, seems to be working fine. Let's delete all the names. And then, yeah, both of these are now back down to zero. So that's what we would expect. So let's go back to the VBA editor here. So somewhere in this line of code, we've got to introduce offset and allow it to dynamically control the position. The position being where the name is going to appear on this particular sheet. How might we do that? Again, you might want to stop the video. We can say, let's work from C6. We're going to work from C6. So this cell here is going to be our anchor cell. Offset just means move away from a particular point. Move away from, a, from an anchor cell, a particular point, by a certain number of rows 
and a certain number of columns. That's all it is. Our anchor cell, we're going to say C6, and then dot offset. And then just for illustration, let's say one zero uh, to begin with. Okay, and let's run the code. And you can guess what's going to happen here. Control S, save the file. F5 key, what do you think is going to happen? We can see all of the names appear in that overwriting. We've just done the same thing again, Chris. Well, kind of, but we managed to do it a different way. So we've made some progress. This time we started in cell C6 and we've offset or moved away from, moved away from C6 by one row and zero columns. That got us to cell C7. That's why we saw the names just overwriting in cell C7 there. So seems like an unnecessary step. We just did the same thing again, but maybe a few of you can see the mechanism is almost ready. We just need to introduce one more element and the magic will happen. So what do you think? We can substitute our row value here. How many rows are we moving away? Rather than using uh, the number one there, let's use the value in the cell here. Remember, we've got a count A formula here that's counting the number of values in the list. Let's use that cell reference. Working with offset is a mechanism you would have seen on the channel a lot if you've looked at the other videos. Um, pop this in here. I'm not sure if I quite got it with the copy. Let's have a look. No, it's not quite right. Okay, I'm just going to copy this reference here. Control C, copy and then control V to paste it in here. And then let's have a look. Yeah, I'm just gonna introduce an underscore here so that the, row con the code continues on a new line. That's only so you can see it in your screen recording, so you don't have to do that at home. Okay, so we've got quite a long line of code here. I see this happen all the time, people, you know, beavering away doing code, that's great, but you can get lost. You know, you can end up with a long line of code that you don't understand well. That's why it's so important to be methodical build it up step by step but we know because we built it up step by step okay we're using offset so it must be to do with position control we've got an anchor cell here which is c6 and then we're moving away from c6 by the value in d4 so we've got to change this by the value in d4 that, so we're going to go that number of rows down and then we're going to go this number of columns across we don't want to go any columns across Okay, and then we're going to put Chris cell dot value in there. Right, how is this looking? I think I'm going to actually change this anchor cell here. I think we're going to be better off going from C7. Not absolutely sure, so we're going to save the file. And then let's give it a test here. D4 looks okay. Offsetting from there. Yep, from C7. So it's going to be zero to begin with. Then it's going to build up. Okay, control S, save the file. F5 key, in fact, let's do the F8 key and let's step through this code. You can go debug and step into, just step through the code step by step and let's see what happens here. Let's clear, clear out the file first, clear out the existing data. Using the F8 key here, stepping through the code, what are we expecting to happen? Well, hopefully a name is gonna appear in that first cell and there it is, there's the name. Okay, looping back up to the top and then we're into our conditional statement. This is the moment of truth. Where is the value going to appear? And the value does appear in the right place. Looping through again, and then, yep, the, value, the values appear to be stacking up there. Now, what I'm interested in is, are all of the values just gonna stack, stack up here? Because remember, when we have a name that's repeated, we want Excel not to add that name to the list. If it did do that, we'd have duplicated names in the list. We only want unique entries in the list. So I'm feeling more confident in this part of the mechanism here, but what about, what about this part of the mechanism? How might we test that? How might we test that we don't have duplicated values in this list? I'm gonna stop the code, control S, save the file. I'm gonna clear out the existing data. Then let's run the whole routine. Just going to control S, save the file. Going to hit the play button for a bit of variety. You can hit the F5 key. Okay, and we've got a list of a list of entries here. Seem to have some values. That's just from a previous demonstration. We can get rid of those. Okay, so how might we test this? Well, one kind of manual way to test it is just to sort the data. Alt A S S. 
on the Windows uh, PC. Sort the data uh, A to Z. And then we can just go down uh, kind of manually. I'm just checking down it now. And I can't see any repeated, I can't see any repeated names there. And you can see even the name that has a single character that's different, Excel has managed to distinguish there as well. Okay, so are we, are we believing this? Are we just gonna believe that this routine is working? Well, no, we're gonna find another way to test it. Well, if I was working through this, I'll find another way to test it. Just for my, my own peace of mind, so I know it works, we can move on to the next part of the test. Now, you might remember right at the beginning of the series, I mentioned we have a sheet in here, which is called Use Indirect, Use Indirect, which is the second sheet in the file. Now, this allows us to do our analysis a different way, effectively, do our analysis a different way. Now, if you wanna know how this works, you can look at the indirect tutorial video. But very simply, it tells us how many times does each customer appear on each sheet. And it also gives us a list of unique names here, a list of unique names. So if everything's working well, then we should have 49 names. We should have 49 names uh, in our list, although I think we're gonna have 50 because I added an additional name there. Okay, we do have 50 names. What's that additional name? Well, you'll remember a couple of videos ago, just go back to the other view. A couple of videos ago, uh, yeah, I put uh, two Lunas in here just to test it. So a good test for us would be to go to the TX sheet, yeah, and just uh, fix, fix this back to what it was before. I did that a couple of videos again, ago and then uh, go through the code again. I'm just gonna clear out the existing code. Just use the control shift and down, control shift down arrow shortcut there to quickly select the data. Then control S, save the file, gonna play the code. How many values do we have in the list now? We've now got 49 values in the list. Just outside of your screenshot at the bottom of the screen, I can see we've got 49 values in the list there. What else can we do to test this? I'm gonna test this the third way to make sure it's working. Well, this list on the use indirect sheet, and now on the use indirect sheet, this was kind of pre-prepared. I pre-prepared this before filming to check against, to make sure uh, what I was doing was accurate during the video series. So let's use these names here, and let's check if the two lists are the same. Now, how might we do that? Let's do it kind of manually just by sorting the data as we did before, Alt-A-S-S, -S. Uh, continue with the current selection, that's fine, sort it. I'm gonna sort the data here, then copy it across to the indirect sheet. I'm gonna just put it over here, Control V. Now already the column width thing is annoying me, so I'm gonna uh, hit the F4 key here uh, to make the column widths the same. I did that by hitting Alt-H-O-W, that brings up the column width dialog box. Just hit enter, so that's setting the column width to 20, although I didn't actually change that value. That then becomes the last action. By hitting the F4 key, you're gonna repeat that last action. That's how I was just able to get the column widths nice and equal there. Right, so are these lists the same? Well, we could just check through manually, and, ah, well, they don't look the same. Okay, so I'm already interested in why they're not quite the same here. Okay, so I'm just going through manually. Do we have an additional value here? Let me see what's going on. Okay, uh, Roger, Smith, Nova, Hernandez. Gonna go to the whole screen view here. Okay, where are we on here? Yeah, Hernandez, Thompson, okay. Aminja, okay, right. So we seem to have an additional value here that's not in this uh, database. So I wonder what's happened here. Okay, yes, I think what's happened is I didn't sort this uh, this this column of data, I didn't sort it uh, properly. So I'm gonna sort it now, Alt-A-S-S, -S, continue with the current selection, sorting that. So both columns should now be A to Z. So they should match up perfectly now. Yeah, I've got the same values at the bottom. How might we check if they're matched up perfectly? I'll just uh, set the view to something where you can see better. Well, we can create a formula here, just put me on the left-hand side of the screen. We can create a formula here to check if uh, these two values are the same. So if this value equals that value, then we're gonna say okay, 
And if not, we're going to say, let's just have three exclamation marks, just so, just so we notice there to give the required sense of urgency. That's okay. Uh, just double click there to auto fill down. And I can see, hopefully going down the list, I can see, yeah, everything looks okay now. So that's as far as we're going to go in this video. And it might seem like we're not covering much ground. It might seem like we're not covering much ground in the series, but I want you to see what it's like going through things step by step, testing at every step, building our confidence, gradually moving towards what Eric actually requires. I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.